morning, Cardinals fans. Happy hump day. I'm Tara Wellman. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you don't know, I cover the St. Louis Cardinals for birdsontheblack.com. And on this channel, you will find daily and weekly videos all about well, my life as a TV professional with a baseball obsession. My goal is always to keep you in the loop and entertained. So with that in mind, let's talk about last night. Adam Wainwright versus Annabelle Sanchez. On paper is a giant mystery. The St. Louis Cardinals have a tendency to get shut down by struggling pitchers, which describes Sanchez. And Cardinal starter Adam Wainwright is in the midst of a comeback season that no one really knows how to be prepared for. With that in mind, both starters wove their way through the first few innings really without incident. Well, mostly, I guess. The second inning was a bit of an adventure for Wainwright. A couple of softly hit but conveniently placed blue pits loaded the bases, but the inning ended with a comebacker off of the bat of Sanchez careening off of Wainwright's foot right to Paul Goldschmidt at first base for the easy out. No harm, no foul, even if it looks weird, right? So we thought. But then the third inning happened. First up for the Nationals was leadoff man Adam Eaton, who promptly launched a solo homer to right field on a not so terrible pitch down and in, just not enough down or enough in. Then rookie of the year contender Victor Robles went back to back with Eaton on a solo shot of his own off of a hanging breaking ball. And when Wayno then walked Matt Adams and hit Kurt Suzuki, it looked like he was unraveling fast. But Wayno and Yadier Molina worked over the new kid Carter Keyboom and the veteran Brian Dozier to get out of the jam. And you know Wainwright hates putting his team in a hole, but this Cardinals offense? Don't you worry, they've got something cooking. In the top of the fourth, with two outs and Paul DeYoung standing at first base after drawing a six-pitch walk, Jose Martinez did what Jose Martinez does. He just hits and drinks coffee. While Molina's hit streak may have ended last night, he still found a way to get into the big inning with a nine-pitch walk of his own to load the bases. And then, my guy, Colton Wong stepped to the plate with a chance to do some two out damage. Just to reset the scene, bases loaded, two outs, down by two runs, DeYoung at third, Martinez at second, Molina at first. And Colton Wong laid down the most beautifully surprising bunt base hit I think I have ever seen and picked up a bases loaded two out RBI bunt single. What? What even are those words together? Now, if you know me at all, you know that I'm very strongly Team Never Bunt. But I'm also just as strongly, probably more so, Team All Colton Wong Everything. So as you can imagine, my Twitter mentions quickly reflected that very complicated overlap of opinions. But I maintain very clearly that it's not bunting in and of itself that I despise. It's bunting poorly. I don't appreciate intentionally giving up outs, but trying to give up an out and still failing to do anything productive with it makes me so ragey. <laughs> Bunting for a base hit with the defense back on its heels, now that's a tool I have no problem breaking out every now and then. Especially if you do it as brilliantly as Colton Wong did last night. Let me know in the comments below, are you team never bunt and did that play change your mind? Craig Edwards from Fangraphs noted later last night that since 2002, there have only been eight successful bases loaded, two out bunt hits. Well, now there are nine. And that wasn't even the nail in the coffin for this game. It was just really cool. The next man up, still with the bases loaded, was Harrison Bader, who lined a base hit over the second baseman, driving in two more runs and putting the Cardinals on top. Now, the point of concern with this offense right now has to be Matt Carpenter. He struck out four times in consecutive at-bats last night and has seven in the first two games of this series alone. So I put my smartest stat guy friend on the case and Zach Gifford discovered that it's really quite simple. Carp is getting beat on sliders. Like, a lot. Over half of his strikeouts this year are on sliders or cutters. Most of the time, Carp just isn't gonna swing at that pitch because he usually doesn't hit it when he tries. 
and pitchers are now doubling down on that particular pitch to Carpenter. I'm not out here trying to tell Matt Carpenter or hitting coach Jeff Albert how to do their jobs, but it seems like they should maybe do something about the slider problem. Fortunately, the rest of the lineup is pulling more than their weight, giving Carpenter the space to work through another slow start, but they're going to need him to pick it up eventually. Now would be great. Adam Wainwright, though, finished the night with six and a third innings pitched, two runs, two walks, five Ks, and perhaps most impressively, he actually got better and better as he went along. It took 42 pitches for Wainwright to get through the second and third innings, but he threw just 22 combined in the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Not too shabby for an old guy. Tyler Webb, John Gant, and Andrew Miller teamed up to wrap up any loose ends, and that is the story of the St. Louis Cardinals holding on to another come-from-behind win for a 3-2 final in D.C. They'll go for the series win today with Miles Michaelis on the bump, facing off against none other than Max Scherzer. And if there is a buzzsaw for the hot-hitting Cardinals to run into, it's probably Mad Max. So, you know, good luck to you, Cardinals. Make sure that you are subscribed right here to Bird Seeds and following along with all the amazing content over at birdsontheblack.com. I'll be here with coffee in the morning, and if I'll be here, you'll be here, right? I'll see you then.